Hey everyone, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today, in the spirit of Samhain, I wanted to talk about starting over or just starting in general. So I've got some tips here for anybody who is just finding their way to any sort of pagan path. And I also have a couple of announcements. So announcement number one, don't forget to go to my website, roundthecauldron.com, and sign up for my newsletter. Um, it goes out at least once a month, sometimes twice a month. It just depends. I promise I won't spam you. But when you first sign up, you get a coupon code for my shop. I think it's 10% off. I don't, rem <laughs> I don't remember how much it is. Um, but I will link my website down below, and I will also... Um, in the description and uh, the show notes for podcast listeners, put the percentage there. Also, um, my year ahead tarot reading is still on sale in my shop. Um, it is almost 50% off right now, and it is on sale until Samhain. So if that is something that you want to take advantage of, make sure you head over to roundthecauldron.com slash shop and check it out. And then I've been entertaining the idea of doing podcasts live, so doing it through YouTube as a as a live stream um, for anyone that wants to chat during it, or if you have questions or comments or anything. Um, it's I think it would be a really good way to get sort of develop that community. Um, that I'm that I really would like to build to have just a community of like-minded people and a place for us to come together and talk about topics that are important to us. So for podcast listeners, make sure that you're following me on social media because I will announce um, the dates and times when I decide on it. Um, I'm thinking probably Wednesdays around 10 a.m. Um, Pacific time. I haven't, like, that's not set in stone, but make sure that you're following me on, like, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter because I will announce over there when I am going live. And if you don't want to follow me there but you want to take part in the live streams, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure that you click the bell because when I go live for the podcast streaming video, you will get a notification if you're subscribed that I will be streaming in like 30 minutes or however it is set up to remind subscribers. So if that's something that you wanna take part in, make sure that you're subscribed to my YouTube channel so you get notified. And last but not least, I have started a new channel. <laughs> um, it is, it's not, pagan or witchcraft related. I mean, it kind of is for me, um, but the topics are not. So I have, I've been building or attempting to build a relationship with a Celtic goddess, Bridget. And since I crochet, and I have done so for a long time, I am feeling, or I started feeling that I needed to bring that to the forefront and really help other people who want to use their craft and their creativity either just in their day-to-day -day or if they want to use it as a way of um, showing devotion to their gods. So I will link that in the description and the show notes below as well. It will not be a podcast, podcast listeners. Um, it will only be YouTube videos. But if you're interested in learning how to crochet, or if you want, well, how did I say it? Tips, tricks, stitches, and patterns. <laughs> Make sure that you're subscribed to that channel too. It is my way of giving back to the community and showing my devotion to my goddess. All right, so now we can, now that all the announcements are out of the way, we can hop into the topic. So I wanted, in the spirit of Samhain, to have a topic that would be relevant. And since Samhain is also known as the Witch's New Year, and it's really a time of new beginnings in my opinion, um, 
it is also a time of dedications, rededications, some initiations, I think, depending on tradition. I don't know about that one. Um, but it's a good time to talk about my tips and tricks and suggestions and overall advice for anybody that is new or just discovering the path of Wicca, witchcraft, or paganism. So if you are new to this faith, this spirituality, this whatever you want to call it, um, I advise you to take a step back from yourself for, for a little bit and just listen to this advice and my suggestions because they come from a good place. And some of them might surprise you um, and then some of them might not. So let's hop into that. So my first suggestion for anyone who is new to this path or who is rediscovering it, or, you know, this is actually a really good tip for just anybody in general on this life path in this religion, in this spirituality, occult, new age stuff. Know the why. Know your reasoning on why it is that you want to pursue this path. Because it is kind of on the fringe. It's being, it's becoming more accepted now. But it's still something that, depending on where you live in the world, um, you can still be discriminated against. You might have to hide your beliefs and your true self so that you feel safe and comfortable wherever you are. Um, but knowing the why is, in my opinion, an essential piece of the puzzle. Because if you're if you're exploring it and you're getting into it for the wrong reasons, then it's not the right path for you. So you need to figure out if you are getting into Wicca or witchcraft for the right reasons. You know, is it curiosity? Um, do you feel spiritually called to this path? Um, do you feel like it's a calling back to your roots, back to nature? and how things originally were? Um, is it a part of your history uh, and your ancestry? Did your ancestors practice a pagan faith? Uh, did they come from a part of the world that it took Christianity a long time to touch or a part of the world where Christianity wiped out most of the sources for the uh, native religion to that place? Or are you getting into witchcraft because you're being rebellious or because your parents told you not to do it or because it's taboo? You know, those are some reasons that are probably not good reasons to get into it, I guess. Uh, I mean, that's kind of a double-edged sword because... If your original thought is, I'm going to do it because my parents don't want me to, but then you develop a, like a spiritual awakening within yourself and you find out, hey, this is actually really interesting and this is something that, something that I believe, something that I feel within myself, that's great. But if you continue on within Wicca and witchcraft and paganism or whatever you choose simply to be rebellious and you don't feel anything about it at all, that's when it becomes a problem. So know your why before you continue. And that, that can be something hard in itself. You know, you might not know why. You might have a feeling, but you might not know the specifics and that's okay. Just know whether or not your intentions are good and if they come from a good place or if they come from a place of rebellion and possible chaos. Then I would say make sure that you research your interests. Um, a lot of the time I've seen when people are doing their research, they're going on and they're researching what they think they should be researching. You know, maybe they're looking into tarot 
or reading tea leaves and they have no interest in it, but they're doing it because it's what they think they should be doing. I, for one, can tell you I have absolutely no interest in learning how to read tea leaves because I don't drink tea and I don't like tea. Now, if I could figure out a good way to read coffee grounds without doing it the Turkish with Turkish coffee, <laughs> then I would do it because I drink coffee all the time. Um, but research your interests. Otherwise, you're going to get bored. You're going to get sort of complacent and just really stuck. And you might lose interest or you might start to wonder why you're even doing it in the first place. And it can be, it can be hard, but don't let other people tell you what you should and shouldn't be researching. If you're interested in divination, go for it. If you're interested in herbs, go for it. Crystals, awesome. But if you don't have an interest in any of those very specific things, I don't think it's necessary for you to do your research about them and learn how to do them. Should you maybe know about them? Yeah, that would probably be a good idea because it's always a good thing to keep learning and become more knowledgeable about things that are in your sort of spectrum of belief. But that doesn't mean you need to know exactly how to read tarot, exactly how to use a pendulum. If it's If it doesn't interest you, then I wouldn't really pursue it too much and I wouldn't worry too much about it. And then you want to make sure that you don't forget the religion. Unless you're secular, unless you, so what secular means is without faith, basically. So unless you are specifically, specifically going for witchcraft only with no gods, no religion, no faith, then, then like, don't worry about it. But if you are getting into paganism and Wicca, with the idea in mind that you are going to be worshiping gods, goddesses, the universe, whatever, don't forget about that. And I, that part can be a little difficult, especially now, because we're all so busy and there's always so much going on and there's so much noise in our heads that sometimes we forget. And I find, you know, at, at first, depending on the gods and the deities that you're worshiping or that you're trying to build a relationship with, they might be forgiving, uh, especially if you're coming from, an, from a Christian background, because that's a little different. But if your whole purpose for getting into this path is the religious aspect of it, make sure that you're not forgetting that part in your day-to-day -day life. Try to build a habit, something I've started doing, especially now with trying to build a better relationship with Bridget, is to either light a candle every morning, dedicate the candle to her, um, or light some incense, or give an offering of heavy cream. Um, sometimes, depending on my mood and how well I slept, I forget. But this is a new process for me. This is something that I've never done before. You know, I'm not going to lie to you and say, yeah, in my whole 10 years of being Wiccan, I always gave offerings to the gods every single day. I didn't. And this is just something new that I have to get used to because I don't, it's not something that was, that I felt was asked of me before. But now that I have sort of taken a turn in my path and my religious beliefs, it is something that is asked of me. And it is something that I need to build a habit of doing because it's about the devotion to the god or goddess that you are worshiping or building a relationship with. So unless you are completely secular, do not forget the religious aspect of your beliefs. Do not forget your deities. Do not take it for granted um, because depending on the god or goddess, that could be a very bad idea. The next thing I want to say is make sure 
that you know what you believe, or at least have a feeling of what you believe. Uh, This goes along with knowing your why, the first tip, but knowing what you believe can be a little harder, and it, it can take time to figure it out. Now, if you're someone who has no religious background, you are agnostic, and you're sort of just open to anything, it might be easier for you. But someone who is coming from an atheist background or a monotheistic background, meaning you're coming from a faith that only had one God, it might be harder. Um, Especially because here in the Western world, Christianity and monotheism is essentially part of everything that we do on a daily basis. Everything that we encounter, everyone that we encounter, whether we know it or not. So like on our money here in the United States, it says in God we trust. When I go to school with my daughter and they do the Pledge of Allegiance, which is weird, um, one nation under God, you know, monotheism is so ingrained in Western culture, even though here in the United States we're supposed to have freedom of religion and separation of church and state, It doesn't always happen that way. So if you're coming from a monotheistic background that has very set and strict rules, principles, and beliefs, this one might be more difficult for you. And it goes along with the next tip that I have, which is to ask yourself the hard questions. So what do you believe about the afterlife? Is there an afterlife? Do we just die and that's it? Are we reborn? Do we get reunited with our loved ones in heaven? You know, what is it that you believe about death, about love and relationships and sex and good versus evil? Those those questions can be a little difficult, but they are in my opinion they're they're essential to knowing what you believe or at least finding out what you might believe. And this can take some research too, because there's not just one belief out there. And it can take some soul searching to really figure out what it is that you believe about the afterlife, about death and religion and the gods. And it's a process, but those are two definite definite pieces of advice that I would give to anybody who is just starting out or who is wanting to rededicate their path or who is coming back to paganism after who knows how long. It's to know your beliefs and ask yourself the hard questions. On a lighter note, my next tip here is that there is always more to learn. You should never stop learning. Do research on your beliefs. Do you have a specific uh, name for your faith Um, on different divination practices or astrology or history? History is such a big part of paganism. And that is going to be because a lot of A lot of what we know about pagan faiths is written in the history books because it's what's called like a reconstruction, reconstructionist or a revivalist. And what we know about these pagan faiths, we get from the history books, from ancient texts and first person encounters. And you're only going to find those things if you look at the history. So don't stop learning. Take advantage of all of the resources available to you, your library, the internet, first-person accounts, if you have access to those, um, mentors, elders, but don't don't, uh, corner yourself into one type of research. Don't limit yourself. And also, in your learning process, don't take everything that you read at face value always um, because 
in today's modern world, anybody can go out there and write a book. And let me tell you, um, I do uh, audiobooks through ACX, and there are so many books on there that are very poorly written, that have no sources, that are just, they shouldn't be there. But I have no control over that. And if they're self-publishing, nobody else has control over that either, except for the author. So take what you read with a grain of salt. Don't stick with one source. Don't stick with one type of research. And always keep learning. Always strive to learn as much as you can. But don't overwhelm yourself. Next, I want to say that skepticism is not a bad thing. It's okay to be skeptical. That's part of the learning process. And I would be very surprised if someone came to me and said, oh my gosh, my best friend can turn into a dragon. And you believed them. Please use your common sense. <laughs> Please use your critical thinking skills. And don't be afraid to be skeptical of things that sound outlandish. If this person came to me and told me that they could physically change their body to that of a mythical creature, I would be skeptical unless they could show me proof and then I, they would blow my mind and I don't know what would happen from there. But this goes along with a, another of my tips that I have written down here that your beliefs will be challenged. But I want to stay on the topic of skepticism really quick because skepticism is part of the learning process, like I said. If you don't have the ability to think critically about what it is that you are encountering, that might be a skill that you want to work on. And skepticism plays a big role because not everything in your life that happens is going to have a magical reason. You know, sometimes that bump in the night is the house settling or your, in my case, your cat jumped off of the staircase. You know, not everything is going to have a magical or supernatural reason tied to it. And a little bit of healthy skepticism never hurt anybody. Tying back into the skepticism part... Your beliefs will be challenged. That is just a fact. Um, they will be challenged by the people around you. They will be challenged by the government. They will be challenged by yourself. You know, it's not a bad thing. And it's just like skepticism. It is part of the learning process. You can't be afraid of change. You can't be afraid to have your beliefs challenged. And in my opinion, if you can't back up your beliefs, then you might have some more learning to do. And that's that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And I, I want to use a, a personal story here for this, this uh, your beliefs will be challenged thing. I have been Wiccan for more than 10 years. I started as a as a teenager at like 12 or 13 years old and it has just progressed from there sometimes i could practice sometimes i couldn't but recently within the last couple of years my personal beliefs have been challenged they have been challenged by myself and my changing thought process and they have been challenged by the gods and it's a scary thing to have your whole religious belief system challenged. And it took me a, it took me a while to really accept that what I believe was being challenged and that what I believe was changing. The more I learned and the more I opened my heart up to the messages that I was receiving. But just know that it can be scary and hard and confusing, but it's not a bad thing. 
let your beliefs be challenged because it's part of the learning process and it's how we grow as people and as spiritual beings. Also, take it slow. Don't overwhelm yourself with information. It's information overload. You're going to get burnt out. You're going to lose interest and you'll regret it if it's something that you really wanted to do. When you learn new things, make sure that you give yourself a processing time. Allow yourself to really soak in the information like a sponge and process the information before you move on to a new subject. And you want to make sure that you can understand what it is that you're learning before you move on. Or you might get confused, you might forget, and we would rather not have that become like a repetitive pattern. I learn this, I go to something new, I forget, I learn, you know, it's not a good pattern or cycle to be in. So make sure that you're giving yourself adequate time to learn and process the information that you are receiving. Um, also with the take it slow, do not feel like you have to go out and buy all the things just because somebody has all the things and they are saying that you need all of the things to do all of the things. It's a lot of all of the things. Um, you don't. Do not feel like you need to go out and buy an altar cloth and a chalice and representations for each element and a wand and a staff and an athame all at once because you don't. Take it slow. Find out what works for you and the things that you feel you would benefit from before you go out and buy something new or thrift something or make something. Otherwise, you're just bringing in all of this clutter that you might use or who knows, maybe it just ends up sitting on a table or sitting on your altar collecting dust. Please don't go out and spend a bunch of money on all of these tools until you know for sure that it's something that you need or something that you want. And lastly, put in the work. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park where if you mess up, you can just say, please forgive me. You know, you have to own up to what it is that you're doing. And you can't expect to just sit back, chill, relax, just take it all in and learn everything. That's not how this works. You have to do the work. You have to put in the effort in order to get anything out of it. It might be hard. It might be easy. It might be the most difficult thing you've ever done in your life. But if it's something that you want and something that you believe, then it's worth it. You know, what's that, what's that saying? Um, nothing worth having comes for free or nothing worth having is easy to get. I don't know. There's just some sort of saying. Um, but it's true. You have to put in the work in order to reap the rewards. Okay, so those were my 10 tips on beginning the path into paganism or redeveloping your path into paganism or just 10 tips for paganism in general. Um, sticking with the theme of Samhain here, the time of new beginnings, I did want to take a second to mention that this is also a time of rededication or dedication. So if you feel called to do so, take this time on Samhain coming up to dedicate yourself to your path. Set a goal for yourself, um, either for you or something that you want to achieve, something that you want to achieve um, in the coming year, or dedicate yourself to a god or goddess or a faith. Um, but that's not something that you want to do on a whim. That is that is a big decision, but it is something that does get done around this time of year. So if you feel called to do so, make a dedication, set goals, rededicate yourself, and 
make some wishes for the new year ahead. Until next time, everyone. Bye! Remember, if you like my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button, hit the little bell, give this video a thumbs up to help me out in the YouTube algorithm, because we know how much we love those algorithms. Check me out on uh, aroundthecauldron.com, follow me on social media, all the links will be in the description below.